Thank you very much, Adam. I would like to thank you for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here. This is my second time here in Israel. First one was 2004 conference in Elax. It was nice. And I like to, to place I'm happy to, to be here. And I would like to see also that uh, this visit in the framework of uh, scientific project that we have. Uh, this project is supported by two institutions, the Academic College of Tel Aviv, of course, and the CNRS, Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique in France. And uh, we thank uh, of both institutions. <coughs> OK, so today I we talked about the descent for quadratic and bilinear forms. Uh, so this problem is a natural one. Uh, when you work about the isotropic problem, the splitting theory of quadratic forms that was done by Nibouj, uh, etc. Time to, to time, you are confronted really to the descent problem. It is natural. And uh, this problem was first studied really by Bruno Kant, who formulated this problem in a very nice way, okay, for a special field. And uh, after that, uh, we try to extend something to characteristic two, and I should say that the problem really is very difficult because we will see that we have some conjecture that they are open, just to answer just few dimensions, okay. But my aim in this talk, I will give you a real general idea what you know about the distance. Okay. So let us start. I will take F, an arbitrary P. You know how to hide this uh, bar? We are, you know? Tu peux cliquer dessus, tu peux la déplacer. D'accord, okay. Comme ça, peut-être? C'est bien? Et là, ça va poser problème parce que tu as des slides où j'y ai la dernière ligne. Euh, It's not okay, so I take F an arbitrary field. For the moment, I have no restriction of the characteristic. Uh, and uh, I start with the definition. Okay, so let's give an extension of F, okay. and I take phi a form bilinear or quadratic over K. Okay. And we say that uh, the form phi is definable over F if there exists a form psi coming from F such that phi becomes isometric when you extend the scalars to psi. Okay. And of course, if your psi is unique, in this case, you see that phi is defined over f. And uh, when psi exists, okay, when this form psi exists, it is unique up to bit kernel of this extension. So here we have to be really in good conditions. You have to suppose that phi is non-singular, okay? Otherwise, you don't have the notion of bit kernel of the extension key for singular forms. But we imagine that we are really in uh, good conditions. Okay. Uh, and now uh, also uh, we work with another version, 
very weak perturbation. If you change this isometry by VT equivalence, then we say we, we talk about the definability up to VT equivalence. Okay, and now the main problem here, this is my problem. <laughs> So let KF a field extension and phi a bilinear. And when it is quadratic, I write it in, in red. I will use it. Okay, and the general problem under which condition your phi is definable or defined. If you of course, you see this problem, we can ask it for uh, instead of quadratic form, we can take a variety algebra, I do what you want. Okay. Okay, look, this is the general problem. And you want some conditions so that your file is defined. So if you are in this situation, you have a necessary condition for your file. The necessary condition, so it's, we will be in good conditions. I suppose that phi has trivial radical, which I will call letter no singular form. Okay, and K F is of finite type. What I mean, it is the, the French terminology. It means that K is finitely generalized over F. Okay, and we have the following. Suppose that you want phi to be def uh, definable. So in this case, phi definable implies that phi is in the unramified bit group of the extension K F. What is the unramified bit group? It is very important algebra object. The unramified bit group of this extension is the kernel of. So if you work with bilinear, you have to drop Q. You take just the bit group of symmetric regular bilinear forms. If you are for bilinear forms, we take the bit group of non-singular quadratic forms, which zero radical. And this is the kernel. This kernel, this is my unramified bit group. And you see here, I used delta V. So let's explain. V runs over all discrete variation of P, of K, that are trivial over F. Okay, take all these discrete variations which are trivial over F. Delta V second is the second residue homomorphism with respect to uniformizer, and KP is re the residue field. Of course, Delta V2 depends on the unit But here I'm talking about the kernel. It doesn't depend. So we have really good which is very defined. And of course, I have a remark. You have the unramified bit group of this extension. And by the definition of this group, of course, you have. Something that goes from A, W, F, or Q, if you like, if you are for quadratic forms. Of course, if you have K quadratic form that comes from F, it is automatically unramified by the equation. And the question that we can ask is it true that any unramified with class comes from it? We'd like to see. And unfortunately, in general, the converse of this implication is not true. We have examples when this inclusion is strict. I will give example later. Good. So we have necessary condition, and to hope the definability, we add we should add something. So we have this question: phi is unramified. Which condition should add so that phi is defined over f or defined? And for the moment, k is general. I will be interested to the case, important case that I would like to talk about. The important case is when k is the function t of a quadratic a quadric defined by a quadratic form q. Here you take the function field of the quadric projective or affine. It doesn't matter, it doesn't change. Okay, so from now until the end of this talk, 
my k will be the function field of quadric. Good. And for this situation, the problem is well formulated. This is due to Bruno Kahn. So Bruno Kahn formulate this conjecture. Is in his paper in the Mathematical Journal in 1995. Of course, we suppose for the moment k of characteristic no two. K is the function field of quadratic form Q, and phi satisfies the following. Of course, we have the unramified condition, and Bruno can suggest the second condition. Dimension of Q, Q gives you K, is bigger than the double of the dimension of phi. And in this case, the conjecture predicts that phi is defined over F. Okay? What is the philosophy of this conjecture? It means that if phi is unramified, and Q has dimension big enough, then phi comes from the base. Exactly the Absolutely, something like that. Okay. But the unramified V group is uh, something, uh, see, a black box. It's the object is really obscure, it's difficult. So, Reno can suggest another other conjectures and he changed this condition by something a little bit clear. If you would like to, to do something by hand, should not take this object, should take the graded bit group. So, he proposed the second conjecture. The same condition, characteristic is not two, k is fq, and phi satisfies the two conditions. So, the unramified condition replaced by this one. But here we suppose that the dimension of phi is smaller than 2 kn. Okay? And we keep the sudden condition. And the conjecture in this case predicts that phi is defined over. Okay? Uh, this condition, what does it mean? This condition means that you have to follow it. There exists psi quadratic form over f. Okay, such that phi belongs to i n plus k, something like that. Okay, good. And third conjecture that was formulated by Bruno Kahn, the aim is to understand this unramified group over function fields of quadratic. The same thing, characteristic is not two, k is fq, dimension of q is bigger than two k. Then the natural homomorphism is, is the basic. So one consequence of this conjecture is if you take an unramified with class, then this unramified with class comes from f mod this power, something like that. And now the condition that we can ask, what is the relation between this conjecture? Okay. Conjecture one is the stronger one. So conjecture one, so I will call you that conjecture one, very simple, unramified and this condition of the job. <coughs> conjecture two is this one. Okay. And conjecture three is just the basic thing between these two questions. So conjecture one implies conjecture two. Good. And we would like to see the inverse of this implication. It's not true. If you suppose that conjecture two, two you, you suppose that you have uh, some integer, capital N. And you suppose that conjecture two is true for every N, smaller N, less or equal to N capital. And the same thing for conjecture two. Then in this case, conjecture one is true for any form phi that satisfies this condition. Okay. So just you can remember conjecture one is easy. We have the unramified condition. And conjecture three is true for an at most five four. That was proved by Bruno Kahn for n at, at most three and Kahn host Sujata for n is four. 
and it is open for uh, beyond four. And conjecture one is true up to dimension five in a complex way. Okay, this is due to can, and we have some con some answers in conjunction uh, in uh, dimension six, seven, eight. That was done by can. Okay, this is what we know about the distance or the conjecture that was that were. Uh, Formula is by time. Now, I will, I will talk about this homomorphism. Okay, it's important. We have the image and we can go to the anaerobic group. And I told you a few minutes later that this homomorphism is not surjective in general. So I give you a few facts about the anaerobic group. Suppose that you have your field F, K an extension of F, and L an extension of K, such that L, K is purely transcendent. Then these two bit groups, and ramified bit groups, are isomorphic. Okay. Uh, we can prove this using the, the Milner exact sequence. Working a little bit, we can do this isomorphism. And now, here this K, sorry because I didn't correct something. I have a problem with my beamer. So, this K here should be F cube. Okay. F cube. So, this is related to the quadric given by Q. Okay, and this unramified with group is a stably birational invariant of the quadric. Which means that if you have another, in some sense, if you have another quadratic form Q, Q prime, such that Q is is iso isotropic over F Q prime and vice versa, then these two groups are isomorphic. Okay, so you have another invariant okay, of the quadric. And we have very known uh, result of Parimala. When the dimension of Q is three, this homomorphism is surjective. Okay. And we have something very general than this result, but unfortunately, only in characteristic zero. Suppose that the characteristic of FF0 is zero, sorry, and Q is a Pfister neighbor. For those who don't know Pfister neighbor, just imagine a Pfister form. Okay, this is the same. Then this homomorphism is surjective. Uh, okay. Well, generalizes the previous result because of the Absolutely. Yeah, because uh, dimension three is all, all the time Pfister. And this is just characteristic zero because they applied some uh, arguments uh, due to Voivodsky, which are valid only in characteristic zero. And can prove that the unramified, there exists an unramified bit class that does not, does not come from the base field. I will give you how we construct this unramified bit class that does not come from F. Okay. I think it's okay. Yeah. So so suppose that F is of characteristic no two. What I we see here in characteristic no two is x and be extended to characteristic two for no singular forms. F is characteristic two, Q an anisotropic Albert form. Many things happen with Albert form, very special forms. So we do the following. You take your Albert form and you extend it to its own function field. It becomes isotropic 
an Albert form, I recall you, just six dimensional quadratic form of trivial discriminants. It becomes isotropic, so here you get a form similar to two-fold Pfister form. So alpha is a scalar and tau is two-fold Pfister form. And what we want is in this tau. The, the client is tau, is unramified. It does not come from the base field up to VT equivalence, okay, which is uh, very strong. Why? It is simple. Why tau is unramified? You take this relation and you add in both sides. Uh, here it should be minus two. Most of the time I work in characteristic. So, <laughs> so you have Q F Q minus tau. It is in I3 F Q, okay? And we take discrete variation of F Q, which is trivial over F. And we apply to this relation delta V2. So this goes to zero, it comes from F, and we get only this relation. And when we apply the second residual homomorphism, the degree decreases by one. Okay, so we get this form in I2. But this form tau represents one. So the dimension of the anisotropic part is smaller than four. And by the hope that you have this form is zero. Okay, good. Now, it is some work. Why this form tau does not come from the base field? Sorry? Uh, as I said, <laughs> I couldn't uh, uh, correct something. Star, what was this relation? Yeah, sorry. sorry. From yesterday, I couldn't uh, correct uh, many things, so. <laughs> Okay, so we have tau is unramified. Okay, now we suppose that tau belongs to the image. If I suppose that tau comes from F up to V, uh, up to isometry, it is easy. Just uh, an affair about uh, fit curve. Uh, it is not complicated. But here, tau could be with equivalence to some big form of dimension very. Okay, so. Take psi alpha tau minus tau. This form, of course, it is here, it is in I3 F U. And we suppose that it comes from F. Working a little bit, we can work that it comes from I3 F. Okay. And in this case, we have to distinguish. So we have the following. Arrive to the following thing. We have Q, FQ, minus tau, is bit equivalence to some psi over FQ. Okay, this form comes from F, there is nothing to do. And psi, it is in W, F. But we can work a little bit to suppose that psi is in I3. This is just the Mercury reduction and the Okay, so. This form is a sum of some numbers of forms, pi 1, pi s, such that pi i is similar to three-fold crystal form, okay? And we can do an induction on pi. So, <clears throat> suppose here you have nothing, okay? This is the first case. Then, what does it mean? It means that alpha tau is isometric to tau, and this form represents one. So the anisotropic part of Q over FQ represents one. And in this case, working a little bit on the isotropic problem and using some results uh, from uh, Hoffman, we can prove that Q is isotropic, which is not the case. Suppose that psi just V equivalent to one plus, to one pi one. You extend to F pi and you are in this case. And your Albert form will be isotropic over F pi, which is not possible. We know it. Okay. And if you have arbitrary number, you, you pass to the function field of pi one. This form remains anisotropic and you apply the addiction. So it works. In fact, Bruno can prove something very strong. He proved that S is at most two. 
but we don't need it. Okay, this is an example of how to, to produce some uh, unarabified fixed glass, which does not come from the Dead Sea. Now, <clears throat> our aim for the rest to the rest of this talk is to consider the distance problem in characteristic two, in the spirit of conjecture two. Why? Because in characteristic two, it is very, very big problem with the unidentified fixed group. We don't know. It's really obscure object. So <clears throat> I will take a field of characteristic two. K is a few from now on. Okay. And because we are in characteristic two, really, I repeat this. I take WF is the bit ring of symmetric regular equilateral forms and WQF the bit group of non-singular and quadratic forms. What I mean by non-singular quadratic forms with trivial radicals. Okay. <clears throat> and I need a definition, small one. The notion of the type of quadratic form in characteristic two. The type of quadratic form phi is this pair RS such that S is the dimension of the radical and R is the dimension minus the dimension of the radical over P. Okay? And I recall that the restriction of phi to the radical is just a diagonal quadratic form C1, Cs. And we have some terminology. If S is zero, no radical, the form is called non-singular. If R is zero, the extremes. If R is zero, the form is called totally singular. Now, <clears throat> the distance for quadratic forms in characteristic two. So we have two parts. I will talk about, I will talk about the distance for quadratic forms. And the last part will be about bilinear forms. Okay, the distance for quadratic forms in characteristic two. So in the spirit of Kant's conjecture in characteristic of two, more precisely, in the spirit of conjecture two. So this conjecture, I call it a star. So F is field of characteristic two. K is a field. And phi is a K quadratic form such that the dimension of Q is bigger than double of dimension of Q. We take the same condition as in characteristic of And we suppose that there exists psi quadratic form over F such that, in fact, here, I will take into account singular quadratic forms also. <clears throat> if phi is not singular, we suppose that we have the same condition as in characteristic two, different from two. If phi is singular, we suppose that we have just bit equivalence without powers of uh, the idea doesn't make sense because we work with singular product. And in this case, we say that phi, conjecture say that phi is defined by over F. Okay. It's okay, you see. So, really the same. The new thing that we add is this, the case of singular form. Otherwise, the rest is as in characteristic differential. So, <clears throat> here uh, we should exclude a case when phi is totally singular. When phi is totally singular, we are here in this case, and phi all the time is defined over. Here. This is just a special. Uh, uh, this is due specially to totally singular forms. That's all. So this conjecture is obviously true when phi is totally singular, okay? So we suppose that phi is not totally singular in this conjecture. And this condition, how can I write it? You have, you have dimension of Q is bigger than double of the dimension of phi. And Q is of type Rs, which means exactly that this is 2R plus S, which is smaller than 2R plus 2S, I guess. And this implies that R plus S 
is bigger than the dimension of five. In some cases, we will work with this weak condition instead of this one. Okay. This is what I. Sorry, if you don't see the rest. Okay. <clears throat> so instead of this condition, we will use this condition. Okay. Which means that this condition is not really optimal. So we can. And what we proved, I should talk, say that uh, this talk is, this is a result joint work with the diction. So let Rs be the type of Q. Then conjecture star is true in these following cases. Phi non-singular of dimension two or four, and R plus S is bigger than dimension of phi. Okay? Or the dimension of phi is three, with this condition. Uh, here, uh, we are sorry, we couldn't take the condition R plus S bigger than three. We should get bigger than four. But here, we take R plus S bigger than three when R is at least one. And also, phi of type one, two. Phi of type one, one, uh, one two means that phi it is of this shape. A, B, C, D. <clears throat> and this condition is really, this case is very hard, really. Needs a lot of work. Okay, so this theorem gives a complete answer up to dimension four. We couldn't do dimension five as in characteristic difference form because we don't have some result on the unramified group as in characteristic. Uh, different forms. For example, we don't know if the result of parimala that I gave is true in characteristic for quadratic forms. <clears throat> okay, to prove this theorem, we proceed case by case, two, three, four, uh, one, two, etc. And we use, we combine many results on Kato's homology, central simple algebra, etc. So I give you just an idea how we proceed. So I choose a simple case, dimension four, because we combine many things. Okay. Well, before I give the sketch of proof, we have this isomorphism due to Kato. We have the relation between the Kato homology and the graded bit group, <coughs> okay? And the isomorphism is given like this. This is Pfister form. So in characteristic two, Pfister form should multiply by linear forms par, uh, by bracket 1a. And you send this class to this uh, symbol, homological symbol. Okay. Uh, just let me recall you that uh, you have to follow. So H2, M plus one, F by definition is the cushion, omega M F, the space of F differential forms. Cushion by, you take the differential operator and you apply it to omega M minus one plus P omega M F. P is the arching Schreier operator which extend the artin schreier map to the usual one, okay? <clears throat> and we need two cohomological results. The first one is this one. F tau <clears throat> is the coupled Pfister form, where k is one or two, okay? We have this kernel. When you go from F to the function field of tau, you get something like it is the image of tau by this homomorphism. Here I should write tau plus uh, i, uh, i k plus one. <clears throat> and we send it, we, we, we take the wedge nu f m minus one. And this group, what is this group? Is the, the bilinear part here. 
this group, mu fk, is just the additive group generated by this delox. Okay, this is due to Araveri Baeza, for k is one, and due to Araveri and Jacob, for k is two. And for k, at least three, we don't know. It's still open this way. <laughs> and we have this injectivity result. You take psi, an anisotropic form of type Rs, such that R plus S is bigger than 2A, then this homomorphism is injective. Okay. So now I give you an idea. Let's ask see what we have. We have Q, an anisotropic F quadratic form of type Rs. Okay. And we suppose that R plus S is bigger than the dimension of Q uh, phi, which is four in this case. So I suppose that I have this. And I take K, the function field of Q. And I take phi, the K form of dimension four, which, so I simplify a little bit, which has trivial R invariant. And I suppose this condition and my the goal is to, to prove that phi is defined over f up to isometric. Okay. So how we proceed? I take the Clifford algebra or the Clifford invariant, if you like. We take the Clifford invariant in star. We get this. Because this is similar to a two-fold crystal form. So the index of the Clifford algebra of psi over k is two. And now using the index reduction theorem by Mercurier, and this condition, we get that the index of psi in fact it is two. Okay, which means that C psi is power equivalent to the to C tau, where tau is some two full percent. Okay, so we take tau in P to F such that we have this. Okay, so this condition gives us, it follows from star, that we have this condition. This condition gives you C phi is C psi over K, and C psi over K is C tau over K, so you have this. You have two two-fold crystal forms, uh, which have the same Clifford algebra. So these two forms are similar. Okay, so we have this. So here we go to descent, but partial descent, because my x is still in k, not in f, and the aim now is to descend x to f. Okay. Now, by B, the function field of phi is the function field of tau, because phi and tau are similar to the function field, doesn't change it up to a scalar. And now you extend uh, star to k tau, so k tau you get the following. And we have this also. This is just by star. Now, okay. Now, to sum up uh, all this, we have this form is in I three, and when you extend this form to k tau, you are in I four. So the degree decrease, uh, yeah, increase so is good. <clears throat> so what does mean this condition? This condition means the following. When you take tau plus psi mod plus mod i4, you are in this kernel. This is the domain. And now k tau, don't forget, is we proved later that k tau is k q. But here the advantage, uh, so we have, 
cut this. But K, what is K? K is FQ, uh, F, uh, this is five. Yeah, and K is FQ. So this field, we can write it like this. So we could switch between tau and Q. Okay, and now uh, here, to pass from this line to this line, we use the kernel two that I called a few minutes ago, and we keep only tau. Okay, and now we apply the first kernel to get this. And, uh, <clears throat> okay, so extending to P. So, so, you know, we start by the, with, uh, the P4 algebra, and we try to increase the etc. This is the idea, but when the arc invariant of phi is not trivial, it becomes hard. Okay, this is what I would like to see about the descent for quadratic forms in characteristic. Now, I take the last part about bilinear forms. So for the field K, FQ, we have to distinguish between two cases. When you study the distance for bilinear forms, you have to take care about Q, if it is totally singular or not. Okay. First case, K, Q is not totally singular. So in this case, we have a result uh, very simple. You take LF, a separable quadratic extension. You take phi, a bilinear form over L, such that we have this. We have the same condition with the conjecture. But L here is just a quadratic separable extension. <coughs> then phi is defined over L. Here it is really simple. You take just, uh, this is an affair of transfer. You take the Charlotte transfer that send one to zero and alpha to one. And uh, you prove that easily that uh, phi is defined over L. Really defined, not defined, defined. Okay. And we give. Okay. And. So just uh, you take the transfer and, but you will use this condition because when you apply the transfer you double the dimension of phi okay and you will be in i plus one and you use the whole size okay so this is not so complicated <clears throat> and we have the following corollary an answer to the conjecture when q is not totally singular We take K is FQ such that Q is an anisotropic, not totally singular form. And phi, bilinear form over K such that you have this usual condition and this one. Then phi is definable over F. You note here that we dropped the, the other condition, which one? We dropped the condition dimension of Q is bigger than the dimension of phi. Here we don't need it. And if you suppose this condition, then phi will be defined. What is the trick? The trick is the following. <clears throat> Your k is the function field of a totally singular quadratic, uh, sorry, of quadratic form, which is not totally singular. So you can write k as separable quadratic extension of a purely transcendental extension of f. We can do it, and we apply uh, the previous uh, proposition, which is, uh, which is not different. Good. So for the distance for quadra for bilinear forms, when Q is not totally singular, the distance is done. There is nothing to do. So now the hard case when Q is totally singular. This is the second part and the last part. <coughs>
So before I give, uh, I study in detail this case, I give an example. F0 is an arbitrary field of characteristic two, and F is F0 xy, okay? X, Y, Z are uh, indeterminate over F. And I take this bilinear form, seven dimensional bilinear form. So let me here because I used a notation. <coughs> when you see this notation, E1, EN, and I write here E, it means bilinear. This is just the bilinear form. So from one to N, E I, X I, Y I. Okay. This is the bilinear. And we take this bilinear form, which is of dimension seven. And this form satisfies something. We can prove the following. Some facts are obvious. <clears throat> of course, I take K, the function field of Q. Okay. Q is anisotropic. Is clear. There's nothing to do. When you take the anisotropic part of Q over its own function field, this form is of dimension three. Okay. And phi plus this uh, power belongs to this image. Here, in fact, I need just m is two. Okay. Of course, we have this for m is two. Mm -hmm. And we have this because two dimension of phi is six, but dimension of Q is seven. Okay, so we have all the, the condition by the conjecture as for quadratic forms, but phi is not defined over here. <clears throat> and this is it needs some more. <laughs> it needs a lot. Not 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 phi is not defined over f. So here we have problem. When you study the descent for bilinear forms over function field of totally singular quadratic form, we are missing something. We need some condition. Okay. And by working a little bit, the condition is the following. So, uh, sorry, here, this is question. I didn't call it conjecture. We have to be careful here. So, so I take phi, a bilinear form over K, FQ. Q is totally singular. We have this usual condition and we have this condition. Okay. And the condition I think that we need, we want, to, or that we should add is the following. Norm degree of Q over F is bigger than two n plus one. What is the norm degree? The norm degree is a kind of discrete invariant that we can associate to any totally singular quadratic form. I will define it. What is the norm degree and the norm field? <clears throat> you start with Q, an anisotropic totally singular quadratic form over F, and the norm field of Q is this field. You take the field generated over squares by the product of alpha, beta represented by Q. Okay? And the degree of this field over F squared, this is what we call the norm degree. And we have this because Q is anisotropic. And for example, for more detail about the norm degree, you can see my paper with Hoffman. This is the first time that we introduced this. Uh, okay, so. This is very important, important. Good, and <clears throat> so about this question, we proved the following with Kisha. Uh, we take phi, an anisotropic bilinear form over K. We suppose the dimension of phi two, three, or four. You see nothing beyond four. Dimension of Q is bigger than 
two dimension of phi and we keep. If the dimension of phi is two, we take this condition here is, is okay. When the dimension of three is three, we take the condition of the norm degree is bigger than two power n plus one, where n is uh, two. And here you see phi belongs to the image. We didn't, we couldn't take the quotient by the powers of the, the fundamental idea because we don't know something about the unradified group for bilinear forms. And when phi is similar to two-fold bilinear crystal form, we get this. And in this case, we have, of course, uh, phi defined, okay? So to prove this theorem, we combined uh, many cohomological results. Uh, for example, we use this result due to Baeza. Here you take a bilinear crystal form, which is anisotropic, and you take the field. This field is just the norm field that I defined a few minutes ago. This is the norm field, F2, E1, En. Then the kernel of this homomorphism is like this. S0, if N is bigger than M, N is the, the food of B, and M is this. And if N is at most N, you have this kernel. So here the situation is better than uh, if you compare it with quadratic forms. For example, if you take the characteristic, uh, characteristic norm two, the analog of this result is due to Orlov, Vichik, and Voivodsky. If you take a quadratic Pfister form, here you find just the symbol, you divide by the symbol. Here, no. You have to, check, to take scalars P1, Bn, where the eyes belongs to this field. You should not take a one e a. This is true for violent quadratic forms. Okay, and for example, if you suppose that n is n, this is what you use. You get simply this term. The kernel is just each element of the kernel is a symbol, and the symbol is given like this. So you use this, and also we used a new thing. If you take Q, an anisotropic totally singular quadratic form over F of dimension 3, in some sense, you will work with the function field of the singular uh, conic. The extension is excellent. Okay. What I mean by excellent, when you take any bilinear form, you extend to FQ and you take the anisotropic part is defined over. So here, we adapt. So we work it, we changed a lot of things using the ROST proof. You know, the excellence for FQ when Q is of dimension 3. In characteristic note 2, it was proved first by uh, uh, Aras. And later, it was proved again by ROST. But ROST used only some algebraic structure. Uh, arguments that we can extend to factors. Okay. And now, here I take totally singular. Now, if you take Q of dimension three, but not totally singular. Uh, yeah, sorry. I repeat. When Q is totally singular of dimension three, the function field, this extension is excellent for bilinear forms, but it is not excellent for quadratic forms. This is what I would like to see. Okay. So I, I skip the detail, it is not uh, important. And now, when Q is an anisotropic, not totally singular quadratic form of dimension three, then the extension FQ, F is excellent for quadratic and for bilinear forms. This is uh, very simple. And now the last thing. <clears throat> yeah, the last thing is because in characteristic two, of course, you see that I separate between quadratic forms and bilinear forms. And for bilinear forms, my Q 
could be totally singular or not. And uh, the question, the natural question that we can ask, what is the relation between the two descent for quadratic and parallel? We can do something in this direction. So I recall something. The Witt group WQF of non-singular quadratic forms has a model structure given by WF, the Witt ring of regular bilinear forms in a natural way. You take a non-singular quadratic form and you take a regular bilinear form. You can multiply them, just tensor product, and you get a new non-singular quadratic form. Okay. This is uh, clear, it is not uh, difficult. Now, I have to, you have to see this line. So our idea to connect the two descent is to proceed in a generic way. How? I take, so I take T, an n determinate over F, and I take B, an anisotropic bilinear form over K. K is FQ, okay? And what we can do, I take my bilinear form and I multiply it by this non-singular quadratic form, one T minus one, over which field, over this field here, we have the double parenthesis. We have to be careful here. If you take T, the form will be isotropic, Okay, so if you take this, uh, so you are over the C and you take one T. This form is isotropic over this field. Why? Because if you take this polynomial and you take the residual, and here you take the theoretic evaluation and you take the this is your polynomial, it has a zero, and you can lift this zero by hands of slip. So you have to take B minus one, okay? And the form phi is anisotropic, etc. But what, what is the first and the second residue of this form? It is not B, of course. The residue form of quadratic form should be quadratic form. The first and the second residue form is the totally singular form, the diagonal form, which associates to E. Okay. The both forms are the same. Are the same. And uh, now we have the following. <clears throat> so if we explore this uh, generic argument, we get, we get the following. You take S an integer, Q an anisotropic totally singular for F quadratic form of dimension at least two, and K is FQ. And suppose that conjecture star, I mean the descent conjecture for quadratic forms in characteristics. Suppose that this conjecture is true for non singular quadratic forms of dimension at most two S when Q is bigger than four S. Then we should start, so I uh, showed the question that was not star, so for it to correct. Then question star is true for cabilinear forms of dimension at most S with this condition. And here, of course, I didn't mention anything about the non-degree, but this condition, we can get it using this hypothesis, which are very strong. Uh, yeah, this, in fact, if uh, we write carefully this, uh, this condition and this one, we can get this. This is why I, I see without this hypothesis, but in fact, this hypothesis inside, so we can it. It is not necessary for us. So, what I would like to see is we can pass from the distance of quadratic forms to bilinear forms by a generic argument. Okay. 
questions. So, like the techniques, it's very ad hoc. Right? In special cases, you can see that this only work in trying to prove a more general statement. Conjecture of rules. So, <clears throat> so yeah, we can do the following. So I will be in characteristic, no, not two. So <clears throat> I take a conjecture two in characteristic, not two. We see. Here I should add condition. Okay. And key, what is key? Is F key. This field, you can write it like L square root of T, such that L over F is purely transcendent. Okay. And we take the, the Charlotte answer. F linear map that's uh, from uh, L, so this is from L to from L square root of E to okay? And we apply the transfer to this relation. We get the following. This is zero. Okay? But this form is of dimension what? Dimension of this one to dimension of five, which is smaller than two n plus one by this condition. So using the whole sets, this form is zero. And we know that if this form is zero, it means that five comes from n. So five. Is isometric to five prime over a, where five prime belongs to W area. Arrive here. This is very general, but uh, we have to descend the prime. <coughs> but I agree with you. It should be a general argument to sit on all this. But. Uh, we we'll say that <clears throat> at the beginning, I worked a little bit with Bruno Kahn on this project, so that <laughs> it is not easy. What do you think that is? Yeah. Any more questions? Not a lot of We'll take a five minute break at four forty. Thank <laughs> you. 